Good evening, everybody. How are we feeling? <laughs> My name is Dr. Alima Gray, and I'm the lead curator for Beyond the Baseline. For those of you who do not know, Beyond the Baseline is a partnership project with um, the University of Westminster, the Black Music Research Unit, headed up by Dr. Michael Riley, who is somewhere in here this evening. Um, and really the partnership is about exactly the kind of conversations that we're having this evening. It's thinking about black music heritage, is thinking about our histories and how to document and preserve those histories. And it's thinking about kind of bridging the gap between the culture, the hearts, the heritage. And so I'm so excited about this event. I'm not going to take over too much than to say, if you haven't seen the exhibition, please do come and see it. It closes August 26. But without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic over to the reason why all of you guys are here. I'm really excited about this, this, this evening event. Colin Grant, such a fan of your work. Um, and we give... <laughs> so, director. <laughs> director of uh, Writer and Director of Writer's Mo uh, Mosaic. So, give thanks. Thanks, Alima. So... Uh... Johnny Cash, you know Johnny Cash? Whenever Johnny Cash came on to the stage, the first thing he would say is, I'm Johnny Cash. And the audience would go wild. <laughs> I'm Colin Grant. <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. So, yeah, I, I'm uh, with Gabriel Badamozzi and and uh, several lovely people. We run Writer's Mosaic, which is a division of the Royal Literary Fund, um, which has been in existence since 1790. And uh, they give us several million grants in grants every year. And they, they allow writers like myself and Gabriel and, and our cohort to keep on writing. So thanks for coming out and making it a good reason for them to keep on funding us. Um, so, I used to be an altar boy. For seven years, I was an altar boy. And um, you never quite forget that. So, I always like to try to turn the theatre into a, a church. Now, at the end of each row, there are some cards. So, can the person at the end of the row pick up all of the cards, right? And um, take one card. Uh, wait, wait for my instruction. Take one card and then pass the, the, the remainders to your neighbor. And as you do, say the words, peace be with you. <laughs> okay, so um, as Alima might say, uh, Ja Rastafari. Uh, <laughs> So I'm going to hand over reluctantly to, to the host tonight, <laughs> who's a kind of younger, more, more handsome version of myself. So I've known Jeffrey Buicci for a few years now. In fact, we profiled him on Writer's Mosaic. Uh, he's a great writer. In fact, I reviewed one of his early books, um, Blacklisted, which I commend. Also, Hold Tight was pretty good. It was very good, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> almost as good as Blacklisted. And uh, he's got several books outside, including a book called Musical Truth, which is a kind of journey through Britain in 28 songs. And, and Jeff is very kindly going to be hosting tonight. Jeffrey Bowichi, thank you. I've been told I've got a microphone that's working, but can you guys hear me without the microphone? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Let me put down this one. See, this is what happens. This is what happens when, when you get given a microphone and then given another microphone. You've got to use two. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Bwachi. You guys all right? Um, I'm going to apologize in advance because we started late. The stereotypes are true. <laughs> but black people, we can get through this. We are going to finish on time. We are not going to run into the interval. This is a celebration. And looking out into the audience, this is a beautiful, beautiful sight. I mean, when I look around, I'm seeing intergenerational beauty here, you know. I'm seeing my own mother. My own mother is in the audience. I won't point at her. And I want to say that was the easiest round of applause that anyone's going to get tonight, just someone's mum. I want to say just 
Can we get a bit of noise for the people born in the 1940s, 50s, 60s? Where are you? Woo! Took a bit of warming up there. Did you hear? OK, OK. These people we should all be saying thank you to. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. These are the people that were there when it happened. Rock Against Racism, people were there, the Battle of Rotten Road, people that were there, the first sun splashes, people that were there fighting, fighting for social justice. You guys, we are here because you always say thank you to all of you lot. And get off Facebook and stop stalking me, stop watching what I'm doing, that generation. What about all of uh, my 70s and 80s babies, where are you? All right, yeah. Come on, like, is that it? Is that all you got? My goodness. My people, that's me. We're the next generation. We know what's going on. Look, we are going to celebrate tonight. And actually, spoiler alert, this is for us as much as it is for the older lot because we have got to hold on for the future. That brings me on to, is there anyone here, 90s? Oh, there we go, there's one. There was one. Okay, okay, sorry about that. All right, all right. You lot, listen, you're in for a treat. You're in for an education. I am very sorry. We're going to patronize you quite a lot. We're going to teach you all about the past. There's only two of you here. But what I will say is we're here to bring vibes. We're here to bring joy. We're here to bring heat. We've got fire in our belly. That's what tonight is all about. Beyond the baseline is the exhibition that you have to go and see. Tonight is about celebrating. It's about music, poetry, history. This is about words and culture. It's about us. And I can't think of a better place to spend my, what day is it today? Tuesday night. <laughs> Tuesday night, when we could be anywhere else in the world, including watching England lose in the Euros. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> so give yourselves a big round of applause for being in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Wowzers. Now, we've got a lot lined up for tonight. You are allowed to cheer and make noise when you hear these names. You're going to hear from an eminent poet, polymath multi-talented, award-winning artist, Carol Leeming. Make some noise for Carol Leeming. I wish that I could play some of these instruments, but it's got nothing to do with me. You're going to hear from Nadim and Momoko of an alien called Harmony. And possibly, because I'm not sure if he's in the building just yet, you may well hear from one Julian Marley tonight, and that, and that is going to be a treat. And if you don't, then editors, just delete what I've just said from the video, and we can make it look good. Now, in a moment, you're going to be blown away by someone who is wearing an outfit that can only be described as, wow, we've been talking for a while in the green room. Yeah, Carol, I'm looking at you. Carol is going to come up to the stage, you guys are going to say, oh my goodness, and then we're going to give her a big round of applause, because we've got stuff to do, and it starts with a conversation with the one and only Carol Leeming. Put your hands together. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Oh. Thank you. Right, Carol, this is for you. Oh. Have you got one over there? I've got a red one, too. One All right, one. perfect. One, two, yep. Oh, she's a professional. She's done that before. She did the one, two. All right. Are we sitting like this? Is this good? I, I don't know. Are we? Yeah. Should Let's we come a bit closer move. forward? Yeah? Yeah. OK. Yeah. I'm not in charge of stage management, by the way. And neither is Carol. All right. Take a seat. Thank you. All right. Now, Carol, first things first. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here tonight. It's really, really special. And uh, I really want to thank Writers Mosaic and the British Library and all the people that have put this together, thank you. You know what, um, reading your CV is a serious feat because there are so many things. I've highlighted all the different things that you do. I've got composer, actor, director, curator, visual artist, multi-award winning disciplinary artist, literature, performing arts, stop me whenever you want. Um, <laughs> musician, publisher, publisher in articles, anthologies, and I know that some of the artwork we're gonna see, you did that too. Yes. Carol. Yes. How many lifetimes have you lived? This is an awful lot to fit into one lifetime. Talk us through. My stock response to that kind of statement is that I don't do it all at the same time. Okay. <laughs> so, um, 
I've got some superpowers, clearly, uh, but also one of them is time management, I would say. And I try to phase projects and the things that I do. But it took me, I think, a long time to accept that I was able to do lots of different things really well. And that's just a journey that I went on. But I'm, I'm cool with it. And I went to Africa as well, where people are builders and farmers, and they can be artists as well. So I'm comfortable with it. Carol, tonight, we're going to be hearing one of your talents, your poetry. That's right. And I know you've got something lined up for us. Yes, I have. With some bit of a soundscape as well, because when I spoke to Colin, tonight is very much about, you know, accompanying the Beyond the Baseline exhibition. So it's about British black music. And so, yeah, poetry with a little bit of a soundscape of music. Now, I know that everyone's curious as to what they're going to be hearing, all right? So... It's not an elevator pitch, don't worry. Don't look so worried, Carol. <laughs> We've been talking for a long time now. You, yeah, you, you, I'm not very good at elevator pitches. I'm not way. asking you to give me an elevator pitch. Yeah. But what I am asking is, what's the golden thread that runs throughout all of your work? I've got a quote which really spoke to me, and I think it's quite profound. Yes. Voice to the voiceless. Absolutely. I think that runs through all the work, um, regardless of what mode of arts or genre that I'm working with. Uh, I write about my own lived experience and other people's experience and create work, uh, you know, from people who have particular experiences who are from the global majority. And that, that is a kind of foundation to my work. But it doesn't restrict, restrict me because imagination is a big thing. Carol, we're going to get into it in a minute. But... I've been given some instructions ah. from Carol herself. So I'm just following oh, yes. the instructions. I'm oh, following the instructions. You've completely forgotten, no? I remember what they there. are. So yes. you're going to hear some poetry. You're going to hear a number of pieces. And the way it works is save your applause until the end. You'll know when the end arrives because Carol will say thank you, correct? That is correct. Okay. If you want to show your appreciation during the poetry performances, there's a very special poetic way you can do this, correct? Well, yes. OK, I'm wrong. No, yes. Are you going to demonstrate what they do? I believe it's a, it's a click of the fingers. OK. Yeah, if there's a word or a line, that's fine. But, yeah, you can save your applause for when I've finished. All right, so can we just practice? If you can click your fingers, just give me one, two clicks one time. <laughs> there we go. Is that sounding good to you? Yeah. All right, and then you know how to do a round of applause because you've heard a few already today. Now, everyone, we're going to get right into it. Introducing the poetry of Carol Leeming. Um, do we have a title? Would you like to say a few words to introduce the pieces and then we can get straight into it? Well, yeah, I'm going to do a couple of... Uh, a few poems that are unpublished tonight, so that's a bit of a special treat in a way. Uh, but also, I'm going to finish with a poem that's been published in... Um, a magazine in London, and I've done this poem as part of my debut chat book, which is Praise Song for Black Divas. So that I'll, I will end with that. That's another way you know that I've got to the end, by the way. So, Fantastic. So, yes. All right, uh, audience. So I just need a let... Uh, yeah, I just need that to... Let's do it. Yeah. All right, everyone, put your hands Stage together management. one time to introduce Carol Lehman. You're going to hear Thank some poetry. You. Well, maybe I could just talk about the image um, that's on the screen. Uh, this is an artwork that I created for the cover of my debut chapbook, which is called The Declamations of Kulai. And Kulai is a kind of griot, a kind of chronicler, a, a, a voice, a person, if you will, that's observing what is going around them in their community and in their society. Thank you. So the first poem I'd like to start with is, um, it's kind of three short poems that are really looking at a positive take on the word black, but are also short poems endeavoring to speak to grief, which is something that we, we know has been 
happening to a lot of people in society. So there are three short poems and they're all titled Black Light. Black Light One. For black light surely can begin to heal A corrosive loneliness of faux caresses Outworn guilt, dingy, biting to dress down Girded innards, drum tight To fend off the sly attacks of everyday anger Crusted grief's progeny there has been a plague, stultified. We balk at each dawn's invitation. The vast black light of universes are ineffable, as is our true loves. It's, it strums every day for loved ones, gone, yet so tethered. They never die. Black light two. Sorrow is a virus turned into dank mold on tongs, furred thick with unspeakable words which rise from pain fissures, billowing into clouds of grayed despair, filling roomy eyes. Twisting heartstrings. Black light. Like a blanket a friend pulls over to comfort or stimming. Gives ease, solace. By obliterating pained stabs of our memories. Black light three. Black is the light the body of everything black is birth and death of everything dark black matter the greater part of the universe's space it enfolds a black rim an iris our eye our eyes gravitas Blackboard pain screeches whilst it models inscrutable algebraic equations, enigmas, torsions, which phase our wits. Black ink fine pointillism draws fast flows into words on paper to drive and shape all our lives, our fates. Black is strongest, black is biggest, while its constancy assures, attests, defines everything, just like an African batik. some ways in, inspired by Black Lives Matter, but it's kind of in the voice. I had a conversation with a young 24 year old and this poem just came out. It's called Expired. My 24 year old nervous breakdown of weeping and acid drizzle of depression of never ending days unspecified like menopause or zero hours contracts this body tries to tag itself as fluid for Instagram my bone marrow sits bloody minded cracking bones wants no thing from persons or anything x x y y x y a Rubik cube nascent identity ponders how consciousness flees a blue choking ozone of self-hate. I try to shift across old 
generational scars, thickened fawn torsions, ridged and devoid of any salve whatsoever. Black tears smell not like the sea, but of white paper or mildewed water, a putrefied stink of black lives taken. Ugly deaths spew over breakfast, lunch, tea, swell guts full of tabloid toxic tales. X marks the spot of our failed morals. Intolerable turns to tolerable actions. This my exit to freedom a polis of love, made of vicarious, pleasurable solidarities. Loving myself and loving others ends the haunts of rapacious oppressors. Kisses, hugs, kisses. Lip inscriptions explode hearts inexorably. Thank you so much. This next poem I wrote in tribute to Ella Fitzgerald as we're looking at music and uh, poetry tonight. And I, I, I perform jazz, I love jazz. And Ella had a very, very particular genius. And the only thing I need to tell you is that she had a very hard life as a teenager. She was homeless in the streets of New York. And of course, we know she became very successful, but at towards the end of her life, she uh, developed diabetes and in fact had both her legs amputated below the knee and eventually died of the complications of diabetes. This poem is framed as if it was a jam session between musicians. When Ella split the scene, Dizzy Gillespie blew his brass lily bebop to start conversation. He ballooned out the bluest notes and Thelonious Monk's fingers beat ivory hammers till it was midnight. Both made a mood insistent as a hook. Ella shyly snapped her fingers Dizzy Jazzly crooned low to Ella. Do you dooby do? Do you remember when you first swung the Apollo stage? Harlem folks were hollering at you. Ella laughed, swung her head. Oh boy. A crazy clown is about to drag me off. He's about to break into crazy dancing and he had wings on his broken down boots and that stage felt hot like an iron. Fear in me squeezed my throat tight, but a jazz spirit in me said, you be sure to touch the ancient tree. Make your secret prayer a song. A beloved ancestor said, you've won. Ella wiped off her wig head sweat. Her white hanky flicked off drops heavy like forlorn blues quavers and Thelonious paused to sip bourbon. Ella sighed, mama's loss. Her stare glassy with snared tears. They fell sharp like cymbal splashes. Ben Webster nodded, licked his lips and hugged on his sax. Its slurred notes soared into sinuous black mellow lines. Ella raised her head, scatting higher 
Higher than skyscrapers, mocking birdsong, swooping, jumping down, upscales, growls, mouth, twisting syllables in turn, and Ella's song poured. A voice of Tupelo honey, full of the coolest starlight, dulcet girly tones moving in spirals, peppered with husky sibilances. Ella's voice could cut like fresh limes. Her timbres thrummed like wild buffaloes till the earth began to move from its axis. Ella hollered rapturously until it thundered and everywhere the smell of ozone and bluegrass Ben stopped, Thelonious left, Dizzy sat, and Ella, with no legs or feet, had flown away. Thank you. The last poem I'd like to do for you is Praise Song for Black Divas because they, whether, you know, it's the blues, queens or whichever era you want to look at, there is a very special place in our hearts and souls that black divas of song occupy. Yes? Yes. So I felt it appropriate to write a praise song for black divas. All hail. Ebony Angelitos, unleashed women with gilded throats, their burnished skin singing high notes of camellias, carnations, jasmine, lotuses, and daisies. Melody is worn on their faces, a wry sadness like golden marigold petals falling in snow around clay feet in stilettos. Stood there, wily indigo sirens, unabashed fams with honeyed mouths, zesty trimbered voices, clap hands, play finger snaps, tambourines and triangles and claves and snares to cast spells. Rhythm is wrapped in their, vo in their bodies with sly ecstasy like a raucous band or choir. African voices rise from their blood, winding snaky hips in satin. Bright eyes, cat-lined, they sear our souls with li lava, luminescent ruminations, lamentations, siren trills, screams, tremulous coos, while they stand in black fire shimmer, star shimmer just beyond us all. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it going for the one and only Carol Leeming. Carol, give me a hug. We have time, we have time. When we were talking in the green room, what's this? This is right in a way. Hold on, Carol, let's move that. There you go. It's us, by the way. Me and you were stage yeah, management. That's yeah. right. I, Don't I, worry. I, I, we can add it to it, our feed later. I think it's Some... arts cuts or something. There we go. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Oh. Carol, one of the things that Carol said to me in the green room, because we're having this long conversation about everything, we were talking about the world, about politics, about art. And I was getting a bit flustered. And Carol looked at me and she said, I'm going to say something to you in Patois. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, I did. Do you remember what you said? Yeah, more time. More time, she said. More time. And I believe that means that we're going to spend more time talking. Yeah. 
Yeah. But thank you for spending some of your time now talking to us. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Um, it's really wonderful to have the opportunity to share my poetry with you all tonight. Thank you so much. I mean, the only thing I've got to say, because I've been asked to give a reflection, and you might not know this about me. Um, I'm the baby of the family. I've got two older sisters. Hands up where the babies are at. All right, Jay, all right, cool. So, yeah, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Um, but I actually recommend having two older sisters because it means that I've gone through the whole world seeing, seeing the world through the eyes of two young black women. And that has saved me in many different ways. And I feel like some of the words you shared with us today are seeing the world through the eyes of a black woman and black women and black divas and Ella Fitzgerald and yourself, Carol Lehman. Thank you. So as, as my new big sister, <laughs> I said big sister, not auntie. You see how nice I am, you see? I know how to get brownie points with people. I'm, uh, it's not my first rodeo. I know how to get people on side. As my new big sister. See, she's happy now. I like look, that. Look, look. I like yeah. that. I will say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Now, we're going to keep it moving. We're going to get on, on time. There are some people that can play these instruments. They are in the building somewhere, I do believe. Their names are an alien called Harmony. That's right. And I'm going to slip away. But thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to the rest of this evening. It's what a treat. Thank you. All right. There we go. Leave that there. Now, an alien called Harmony. Are going to be introduced, and then I'm going to talk about them afterwards. That's what Colin just said to me. <laughs> there you go. Colin, I'm doing as instructed. with pennies, still a dreadful pittance, all that cash you flashing might not get admitted, tech, no feudal lords living off the cloud rent, where, where are you lord, where did you get sent, save your needs, saving guests, that's the circumstance, we in heaven, we in hell, no need for up, down, after life, resurrection, just need to get well. Oh, <laughs> 
insanity every every word i say who who you talking to will will they understand seed as it blooms content my heart my hand analyze and chop change alter till my hair gray alter till there no paid silence fills the air space Yet I hear trees that are talking to me, birds in the breeze that are flocking to me, talking, chirp, chirp, beep, beep. Either way it sounds so sweet, it must be a bird thing. Attachments, one aversions, two morality will get its due. Death will come for me and you. So what will all this barking do? Cause the voice of the leaves and the cries all seasons. Nobody wins, but they can't stop feeding. Only cause we stay thirsty. To, to be, be worthy. worthy. Rest in my eyes, I see clearly. No words can teach me more than I know when I rest my head. Don't wake up for the first time on your last breath. Surprise, there are only a handful of places 
signal righteous tingles as the flat white touches the pinkest of tongues index finger to indicate silence much broken glass and broken sums crooked equation hail crook hail crook public rejection where the flare crook Pacifying in the wrong way, conquer is the mainstay. They divide to we all say, we know your fears and every little atom there's life and death. Barren is the land of your pillage and theft. You'll never be redeemed, but there's no life left. But we plant new seeds, we hope and pray, but we never forget. We never forget. 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 Never Okay, now's a good time to say good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Momoko Gill, uh, my name is Nadim Dingabisi. Together we are an alien called Harmony. The last song you heard is called Fighting the Atom, and it's about the bickering that goes on with the human species online, and why that's not a good thing. Um, and Ruminations is about just thinking about existence. This next one is, wait, I've actually forgotten, what's the next song, Marvel Girl? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, okay, uh, we're gonna put it to the audience. There's two songs, um, different songs. So, would you like to hear a song about a, I guess, I guess it's about a relationship breaking up, um, which is one option, that's option A. And then option B is a song about an arrival on a new planet, or rather, or immigrants arriving to a new land. So hands up for A, which is the breakup song. Well, I thought we had time for both, no? Yeah, but we could just, it's oh, okay, just sorry. good audience participation, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and hands up for B, the, okay, wow, well, okay, cool. Well, we're gonna Sorry, is it enjoy the alien planet? Yeah, oh, when right. it's the alien planet. Oh.
miss the home, the land I was dreaming on since I was young. Seeing love, being loved in harmony with land below and sky above. Abundance touched my brow, my tongue, anointed by the land I love. As child I lay under thick shade, and adult I emerged, became to be shined on by. I learned about the ways, the days, petals fell and bloomed in blaze. In darkness, never I afraid. To dance in be one with the abyss speaks in scripts and tongues to those with and without one. No funds needed to share. I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear. This land was bliss. I swear. Expectations, which thank you. So, all three of those songs are part of our uh, debut EP called An Alien Called Harmony, and it will be sold outside at the interval. And if you are so kind, you can purchase one from Bluebell, who is here. Okay, the last one is a breakup song. Uh, it's called <laughs> <laughs> It's called After the Dance. And yeah, we kind of, yeah, well, you, you'll, you'll hear it. It could be about other things as well. Yeah, we've got other stuff, but this is the one that we prepared specifically for tonight. <laughs> Oh, stop. 
while reality is light on head off. Yeah, that's us. We're in an alien called Harmony. And yeah, our debut EP is out on uh, streaming services, YouTube, and in physical format. So if you're feeling kind, purchase one tonight. Uh, thank you for having us. I'm the Deem Dinger BC. This is Momoko Gill. Yeah. All right. Now we talk. Now we talk. Um, come, 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 come. Drink your water. Drink your water. Sit down, sit down. Oh, we've got one mic between two people. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. You're all right. You're like, I don't need to talk. There we go. Stage mic. Take a seat. Take a seat. An alien called Harmony. Um, I found out because I was very curious about the name. An alien called Harmony. <laughs> and I found out, tell me if I'm wrong, that the name is from a story that you are from another planet that is not the Earth. And you've come to Earth to spend some time with us Earthlings. And as a member of the Earthling race, who is about to vote in a general election <laughs> very soon, I'm sure the question that I have is the same as everyone in the audience right now. Can we come with you? 
<laughs> can we can we all come with you? Can we leave can we leave the planet and come to wherever you're from? I mean if you use your imagination you can go anywhere, can't you? So. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. There's actually a, a, a whole other story about how the name came about. I'm not sure we have time for it today, but wait, what was the other story? Oh, the whole Bonnie Bridge thing where um yeah. You're I, have to tell it. Well, I'll be really, really quick. The Go name for it. came out. I used to be a news producer for a really short time. Um, for a Japanese news channel, and um, um, we were doing an alien special for some reason. It was mostly news, but one time it was just an alien special. So we went to Bonnie Bridge in Scotland, and the councillor of Bonnie Bridge was telling this Japanese t TV crew this whole story of how he gets all these phone calls about witnesses of this alien, and her so name was Harmony. go to Scotland when they yeah. arrive. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where they go. Place, okay, yeah. noted. Yeah, so, so that's where I got the name. He said that the alien who everybody keeps citing is called Harmony, and I thought that's a nice name. So. Oh, I thought it was a music thing. I thought it was like, <laughs> no. you were, like it was a metaphor, like an alien called Harmony. But it no, is. There's an beginning. alien called Harmony who yeah. lives in Scotland. Lives in Bonnie Bridge, Scotland. All right. <laughs> and that alien is somewhere up, up north right now as we speak. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we thank that alien <laughs> no for metaphors. giving you a name and inspiring you. The music is amazing. It's incredible. I always find it difficult to keep my feet still. And at one point, I've never taken mind-bending drugs my mum's right here, so mum, I, I promise. I, she's looking at me like, mm, that was African mum look right there. I haven't, um, but I think I know what it's like now, having heard some of your music, <laughs> just, just a little bit. How do you get to this point in the, 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 the EP? What are you trying to create? Because it is absolutely I mean, astonishing I think, soundscape. Uh, so I guess it began from a very conceptual place. So we had met each other prior, just at musical things. And then um, Momoko was working on a solo project that I was doing. And then we'd started to do some like duo stuff together. And we just have sort of ideas that maybe don't really fit our individual approaches. And it's interesting to write from perspectives that aren't always ours, but put a little bit of our perspectives on them. So it was kind of a chance to explore quite heavy um, concepts and ideas in a way that was freeing from like the ego. Um, so that's a, where I think a lot of it has come and just a lot of creative songwriting. And so Momoko might give an idea like, okay, let's write a song about the internet and the fact that people fight on the internet and how can we make that interesting? Um, and a, how sort of small are bickering is when we zoom out. So it's not necessarily just about us being aliens, it's like understanding the human the human perspective from an outsider's perspective. Yeah. And maybe looking at our humanity through a lens that isn't that hasn't been colored by the lived experience. So a lot of it comes from that place. And also the aliens are kind of naive because on their planet there's no death. They're, they're immortal beings, and they don't have conceptions of life in the same way. So they're also not like completely sorted. Mm. Um, so they're trying to figure it out as well. And maybe that's also something about humanity that you know we should have grace with ourselves, um, to, uh, much as to a certain degree. You know, some people need other things, um, but um, to have grace with ourselves in order to maybe understand other perspectives and other alternative realities so that we can live in harmony with one another. Because that's kind of the only way that we're going to do anything. But that's a, that's a, it's, a long, it's a long, hard thing <laughs> to do. I'm clicking on my ones here. Living in harmony is the way we need to get forward. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're blessing the stage. Um, a lot of your work sounds like it talks about experiences that a lot of people can relate to. You know, you talked about social media, about conflict, about immigration, you know, things that a lot of us in this room might have experienced, either directly or maybe our ancestors, our predecessors. A lot of this sounds quite personal. So I have to ask, breakup song? Oh, <laughs> well, mine was from a different, like, I had written a poem 
It wasn't even. It was. It was not really a serious relationship in of itself. But it had a lot. No, seriously, it wasn't. I don't know how many years ago this was. Um, maybe. I just heard someone boo. Is she here now? Like, oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Um, this is maybe like I don't know eight, nine. I don't know how many years ago I wrote this poem, and it was just a section of the poem, and then we turned it into a song. But Momoko's lyrics come from a, a different experience with someone we both know. If that's about, it's about that person, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's more like the other song. Right? Oh, that is true. That's oh, more like the other song. I think that might have been another. That's another song, yeah. I need to get this EP. There's you do. No, there's, there, a of, no, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a there's a, there's a lot of different experiences that are cross linked that are not necessarily like our collective experiences. So, great expectations. I was sometimes maybe reflected on the fact that how my mom came to this country. So my mom came from Sierra Leone um, when she was 17, um, and by herself was very young. And some of that was kind of, I was channeling some of that. Mm. Like, miss the home, the land I was dreaming on since I was young. You know, people come to this country. It's cold. Um, you come from uh, the, hot, uh, the hot sun. <laughs> and you're here and you're alone and you're trying to adjust and make sense of it. Um, and I don't know whether Momoko's experiences were also, you can talk about your experiences and how they infiltrated the song as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I um the, the breakup song is like not on the EP. I feel like that's from a different, like an earlier time. Not that it's like still not valid or important, but like the EP is like quite a conceptually complete piece. So like the Great Expectations is like the arrival song, like the siblings come from the planet that doesn't have death. So it, it's really idyllic in some ways, but it's kind of missing something. And it's kind of a journey of discovering discovery. And um, the last, song, just to summarize, is 998 Bricks, which um, is to do with meditation. And um, and in between, there's like corpse pose, like that's dealing with death and mortality. And um, um, so, yeah, we reach this point of resolution where that's really joyful, but the joy comes from like letting go, uh, which is like a lesson I get from meditation and I've gotten from meditation. Um, and the as well to some extent, maybe. Um, and I feel like that all ties into like how we work well together, which is like, even when conversations, the, the theme of harmony is just always an undercurrent is something I've always felt. We're not trying to be the best or like really morally good or, you know, when, we're not, with the way we talk, it's like we're trying to find, find harmony. That's some kind of recurring theme because like Nadine's also like, you know, he's been interested in Taoism and things like that. So we've talked about that as well. And um, so, yeah, um, the resolution is like the letting go. And the letting go for me is like connected to the theme of harmony that I think connects me and Nadine. Amazing. Well, listen, thank you so much for bringing your harmony, your sounds, your new songs from your new EP, An Alien Called Harmony, available right now, out there, I do believe. Give it up one last time for Nadine and Momoko. Thanks for having us. I'll take that. And now we're getting ready for an interval. So go and do what you need to do, and we're going to come right back here shortly. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. Oh, yes. Oh, I know you're excited. I can tell the excitement. Can you feel it? Energy's real, you know? Yeah, Energy's yeah, real. Yeah. You, you can feel it, you can feel it. Yeah. I don't need to do an introduction. <laughs> so I'm not going to, no, just kidding. I mean, what's there to say? We're, we're talking about one of the genre, one of the genre's most eminent musicians, songwriter, producer, humanitarian. We're gonna talk about this, the work that you do for the world. Awards nominated, award winning. And can we just say, before I say anything else, congratulations on the 2024 Grammy Award for Best Reggae Album for Colors of Royal. You see that there? Yeah? Performing internationally, performing just yesterday, so we are blessed to have him here, because I know he must be tired, and I think he might be performing again tomorrow. Yes. All right, so if you want to see Julia Marley, pause. You're supposed to clap. Yeah. 
I've never done this before. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah. If you want to see Julie Marley perform with me, you know where to be. Check the calendar. There are some dates happening. I think it's London to... Uh, yeah, tomorrow at the Fox and Firkin, which is in... I forget where it is. Lewisham. Ah. Lewisham. Fox and Firkin. Uh, the Lewisham crowd. Did you hear them? Did you hear them getting all excited? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's coming to your ends. Um, Julie, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here, you know. Um, and, and I know that everyone doesn't want to hear me talking. The way we're going to run it is quite simple. We want to hear about your musical history. We want to hear about you, but we're going to do it through a selection of tracks mm. that you have brought to the table. All right. And everyone's very excited now to know what you're going to bring. Before we do that, though, before we do that, though, tell me what the reaction is like when you get on stage, because you perform in front of a lot of people. And I'm wondering, what is it like when you get that energy from the stage, people that want to sing your songs and see you perform? What's it like? Well, for you? energy well, is a spiritual energy for me. You know, like from, as soon as we touch the stage, it's a different, as we would say, somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a different, it's a more enhanced, it's a different somebody that's on the stage. And it's just, you know, like, as we say, the music is for, is for the people. So right away is connecting to the people spiritually, to the music, vibrations of the music and sound and, you know, and conscious lyrics, really. So that's, you know, it's, that's what I have to say, simple. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we need it more than ever. We need it more than ever right now. So True. this is, this is important work. So here's how it's gonna go, all yeah. right? Yeah. I'm gonna, we're gonna pretend that I don't know what the tracks are already, yeah? <laughs> I'm going to ask you the first track. We're going to hear. Suppose, suppose I don't remember neither. Then we're in trouble. <laughs> then, then we're in trouble. All right. Then we got to do something else. Okay. All right. So, if you don't remember, then I don't know. We'll, we'll look up there and just smile <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we're going to hear some of the track, and we're just going to hear a little bit about what it means to you, why you thought that was an important song to bring to this audience. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. All right, all right, nice. I like this, this is working, this is working. So, first track that you want to bring t today. Um, give us the title, and then we'll hear a little bit of it, and then we can get into the history. Well, one of them is Natty Dread, you know. Um, as a youth growing up, that song, you have certain songs that you remember all the time. And Natty Dread is one of those type of songs. And is, is a... Um, True must speak about Natty Dread from 1st Street to 7th Street. So it's almost giving you a bit of your culture of Trenchtown, because those are the streets in Trenchtown. So in those days, I don't know what was happening, why the man them, why they had to jump the, the fence and to get across, you know? But you know, that song, you know, is a, as we would say, that was a, like at the height of our father transi transitioning from like singing with Bonnie Whale and Peter Tash. So that was like, that's like him himself opening up. Right. So that's like he's being born again, you know? So Natty Dread, and I, I, was, I was born around that time too, wow. so it's Natty Dread. <laughs> so you were born into this song? Into this song. You were hearing it as, yeah. A, yeah. as a little one. Yeah. All right, we're going to hear some of the song, and then I'm going to ask a few questions to get into it a little bit more. So, yeah. all right. I don't know if we've got a selector up there. I don't know if there's a DJ. Run I don't it. know what to say. Do I say run the rhythm? What is this? They like your selection. All right. They like your selection. All right, all right. No one said wheel it up, though, but I don't know, I don't know. They don't know. There's some cultural norms you have to get used to. So, like, where does that take you in your memory when, when you hear it? Well, that really took me back to really taking up the album and looking at the album. And, you know, I was told not to touch the record player. <laughs> I am a music man. You cannot tell a music man this thing, you know. So yeah, yeah. so this is like one of the first albums that we put on the turntable and we play, we're gonna stop playing, because that's like, maybe you have two albums them time there, so that's one of the albums, um, you know? Yeah. So that, that's why, it's, you know, that, that memory, just because of that, you know, it's seared into the memory and into the soul, you know? Did you do it in secret? No, nah, man, up front. Up front? You, you just hear it playing and when you come, here, we are, here I am, spinning the record. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't play music in secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna write that down somewhere, that's amazing. <laughs> you can't play music in secret. It's true, it's true, it's for everyone. Um, like, um, I grew up in Brixton, yeah. in London. Yeah, so my heritage is Ghanaian. 
but I was in Brixton, so I grew up around a lot of Jamaicans. That's true. A lot of Jamaicans, you know, and you can see I'm trying to keep up here. I've got, <laughs> I've got little baby locks. Coming up, coming up. They're coming up, coming yeah, up. you know, yeah. give me a few years. Coming up. It, that, that song, to me, it, it feels like it connects me to places I've not been to. It, like, yeah. it feels like it connects me to Jamaica. Talk a little bit about the way that your music, your father's music, has this ability to connect people. Because I think well, that's such a powerful thing with reggae, but with your music specifically as well. Well, like I guess the reggae music in itself is a um, hypnotic music. It's a spiritually magnetic music. You feel it. Even if you don't want to listen to it, and you say you don't like it, if it plays two minutes, you find your head moving. <laughs> and you don't like it. You understand? But that's the music. That is the music. That's the only type of music and African music where no matter what you do, you have to move. Because the heartbeat, you know what I mean? But like we said, the message of the music is what is really gravitating because it's a, you know what I mean? Like our father said, he doesn't come to speak his message, he comes to speak the message of the Almighty. So when you're speaking the message of the Almighty, that is everything that is on creation, even the trees, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it is, that, that, that cover all things right there, you know? Wow. It sounds like you had a very, it might be the wrong word, but a very spiritual upbringing. Is that fair to say, or is that well, wrong? Well, yes, we guide, well, you see, when we, yeah, from a band, we don't have guidelines, because, our, you know, it's not like we were born when, you know, when our parents are searching for our consciousness. Hmm. We born in the consciousness, so like, you born and say, yeah, see the consciousness, yeah? <laughs> you know, and, and it's, 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 it's like, you know, it's like, you know, that becomes, that's the normal for me. Yeah. I never even know nothing else. All so right. when you have that now, you can share it now with the knowledge that we have now, we can share it with the world, you know, and with your brothers and sisters and everybody. That's it. All right. Oh, it's getting deep, isn't it? It's getting deep. <laughs> you know, we started strong. We're only going to get stronger from here. All right. So that was Natty Dread. Next up, what's the next song in your Desert Island disc that you want to bring to the table? You can look at my notes, it's okay, don't all worry, right. don't worry. If you don't know, just say you don't know, look, it's all here, you can yeah, man. read it. Yeah, man, Rastaman Vibration. There we go, you see, it's, it's all family. Rastaman, run the track. I don't yeah, know. run it. Yeah, run it. You still got them, you still got them, vibes, you know? Vibes. Whoa. Vibes. I feel like a real raster man myself. I'm up here Julian Marley really? just jamming. This is this is this is special times. I don't know what you guys are doing. I'm up here. Oh. Yeah. Julian, like, you know, the sound was kicking out there. Yeah. Sound system. Definitely, definitely. And you know, like there's a few things about, you know. I'm, I've got British passport. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm British person. Yeah. You cannot understand the United Kingdom without understanding Jamaican culture. <laughs> Full stop. You That's need to know. No, That's I'm serious. I'm serious. That island is a very big part of British history, whether it's anyone true. likes it or not. It's true. And I feel privileged to have grown up in it. So, sound system culture, you know, I want to know. Tell me the stories. Forget these people. Yeah. <laughs> tell, what, sound system? Tell me, yeah, sound system. When, when did you get these sounds in that environment? Take me back to your youth, because I know you must have been young when you were hearing these sound systems. For yeah, the first time. well, you know, we used to go around a place called All Saints Road, you know. You know, as youth. Back in the day, they called it Frontline, I think. You know. So that's the, when you go up on this road now, it's like you walk in a, like you, they, you know, the Caribbean, not no special place. You're in every Caribbean island yeah. one time. You understand? Know Jamaican restaurant, this, this every, every nation from the islands, food, juice, music. So you used to have a place called Metro. <laughs> <laughs> we know who knows the metros. Right? There was... Where the real people know the metro. So what we happened to Metro? It's like a youth center, but it's reggae music, it's everything, it's just reggae music. It, certain time them play sound system. Mm. Yeah. So we can remember, you know, you know, because my mom used to go there enough time to, and <laughs> many, many people, you know what I mean? Many people go there, and we meet enough of my virgins them right there, where we know up to today, same way, you know what I mean? But when you go there, you get that culture, they might play some music downstairs, mm. 
So you pass through the first part and the music is playing and you go out the back and you can play football and yeah. this and that with the kids there, man. Thing. But music, yeah, it was always pumping right there. Nice. You know what I mean? So that is one of the first introduction to the sound, that loud sound system yeah. type of thing. And you know that someone was paying attention because they made sure the subwoofer was here today. Yeah, they, they made did. sure it sounded right, you know? That shaka in the place. Yeah, it wasn't a little radio. It was, yeah, yeah. it sounded good. It sounded good. Yeah. So we've had Natty Dread, we've had Rastaman Vibration. Rastafarianism is a big part of the story. Well, like when you see, yeah, so I mean, there's two songs, it's got, every song has Rastafari in it, really, mm. when you check it. Because Rastaman Vibration, you know, that song is like, we can wake up to that song and battle every negative energy that's out here on the earth. Because they might tell you, say, live if you wanna live, Rastaman Vibration is positive. So when you wake up with your positive vibration, it liquid all negative vibration. Once you firm with your positive, you know what I mean? So that is one of the songs that, yeah, we put on when we're ready to go. Mm. Chant down Babylon, as they would say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're giving us an education today, all right. <laughs> Some people are like, chant down what? Who, what? <laughs> Who's Babylon? <laughs> yeah, you go and read a book, you'll find out. Go listen to the music, you'll find out what Babylon is. You're in it right now, trust me. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> really not. Are we not in the British Library? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's a... Uh... Yeah, you know. And like we say, little bit of Babylon is in everybody. That is the thing. It's not even where you are, it is what is in you, what is in. So it's good when you can find that Babylon in you and kick it out. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. You like that one. You were, you were, you enjoying that one. Yeah. What, what did we just hear? What did we just hear? Rastaman chant. Rastaman chant. Okay. And um, one of the things that frustrates me about a lot of modern music for young people is that it doesn't have lyrics that tell you anything that you can learn from. A lot of music, because I write books about music and I've, I've noticed that. This music is constantly giving you messages, sentences, words you can learn from. Yeah. What are some of the words that we've just heard that you carry with you in your work and in your life? In well, the, in, you know, in, like in the man say, hear the word of the rest, the man say, Babylon, the throne gone down. So it is really a more of a, this one is a more of a spiritual song. So, you know what I mean? Like if I, if I listen to this song, we can listen to that song and read all the Bible. And we can listen to that song and pray. And we can, you know, meditate. So you, know, you have different songs for different, you know, kind of purpose. But this one, you know, it might tell you about the seven seals. So it might show you, say, Rastafari is the Almighty in that sense. You know, Jesus Christus. Same connection from King David come right through. And it takes the Rasta man to really bring it out in a different way that can relate to everyone. Because, you know, we grew up in a church still, you know, and, and thing like that. But it's not really about the church, it's about how do you feel if you go to the church? Like, do you feel, do you get a welcome? Or you feel like you're being pushed out when you say you praise the same father that they are praising? The only thing is that we realize that the history go more deeper than what we've learned while we've been yes. living in these places. Yes. As a matter of fact, these three came from your own hand, and then it come back to your hand. You understand? Mm -hmm. So this history that we have, and the rest of the man bring it across with the consciousness in the light, and in the, in the way that you can look at it in a different way, and it can relate to everyone, not just, I'm the rich power here, I give you the knowledge. No, I mean, Suppose the riches don't make me you say you, have, you don't have the knowledge, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have the knowledge, you know, you have Amsham and Japheth, as they would say, you know what I mean? One man is technology, one man is the spirit, and one man is the money. So no man can do without no man, and that is why we have the war today, because it's like, you know, you have the spiritual and you have the this and the that. But these three men work together, the spirit man, the, the, the man of technology, yep. and the money man. And when you put these three together, you have civilization, you know what I mean? So the Rasta man is the one that kind of bring it across that make me even can, that I can even relate more even to 
the Bible. You understand? Because I could feel like a stranger to the Bible. Because they said, King James has written the Bible. So when I was a youth, I think, say, whoa. As a youth, as a four-year-old, when you read the Bible, I think, say, like Christ came into England. Yeah. You understand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when you read it the next way, you now you get it on a different level again. And it's like the whole world was one. So there was no this and that. It's just some man come from over here. Those who live in the sun, live in the sun. Those who are living in the coal, live in the coal. But we, we get together at some point. So I don't know who, who came up with the division. But as we said, this whole Rastaman vibration, this whole Rastaman chant, you know, is something that has been very enlightening to the whole world, as yeah. we see. Everywhere you go, we see the culture and hear the music, you know? Definitely, definitely. I can see why he won the Grammy. Actually, I can see, I can see why, you it's know. It's okay, innit? <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true, man. It's content. It's content. I mean, there's a lot we can talk about, but I don't want to not have enough time for your final track in this selection. Um, Exodus. Exodus. There you go, man. Yeah, where, where to begin with that one? I mean, you heard the reaction there. You heard the reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a legacy that you personally are crafting and are leaving with your work, the recognition for your work, the audiences. There's the wider legacy of, obviously, the Mali name. That's a legacy in itself. Then there's reggae. Where does this song sit in that whole story for you? Well, this song is like one of the one of the um, you know, the cornerstones of the whole music, you know. It's like this is, I guess, this is the album and the song we really put our father, you know, yeah, that song kind of cement Bob Marley and the Whalers across the world, you know, across England, and you know, and as well as being one of the albums recorded in England also, you know. So that whole album is like, yeah. When we are you, we study them album back to back. Really? Yeah, because it's like England, we have studied them album first. Okay. Kaya, Exodus, and Natty Jed, you know. And then we start going to the other albums then. But like, we're born in England, Natty So you're born in England, so the first albums you're going to get is the ones where, you know, released here. Mm. So you get Exodus, you get Kaya, you know. And you were studying them? Yeah, well, them album, yeah, play them back to back. Yeah, wearing out the needle. Yeah. All right. Yeah, What's Colin just done there? What's this? He's, I mean, I'm trying to talk to Julian Marley. He's putting paper in front of me. I'm all confused now, you know, like, I was, I was feeling good. Now I think I'm doing something wrong. Like, sorry, Julian, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> um, two of your songs. Yeah. We've got Roll. Yeah. Roll. Um, some of these guys know it. If you don't know it, go and see him perform tomorrow. You know he's Lewisham. Go and see, and you'll and you'll see Roll. Yeah. I think I think really we want to just know a little bit about these songs. Yeah. That's a banger. That's an anthem. It's an anthem. Yes, yes. Roll. Roll, yeah. Yeah. Positive every time, keep on moving, you know? Mm. Yeah. You saw it, you saw it. And that was like, oh, I heard a bit of that dance hall rhythm that got me, you know? And then I heard, um, yeah, yeah, so. You know what to expect up on that one there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, music is, you know, I mean, for me, music is endless, and I have to speak to every walk of life in every corner, you see? So if you're carrying your message, you cannot be sticking to what you think you want here and what. He says, spread the message to all four corners of the earth. So that means a little of this, little of that, the little of the different sound. And why? Because different people have to get this message. So I just say, God, it's not a non-partial thing. There we go. <laughs> Listen. Um, we've got one last track that we're going to hear. I'm afraid that's the end of the playlist after this. <laughs> it's another Julia Marley song. Um, the piece of paper says, Jar Sees You. That's the wrong title. Yes. Man. One thing that I love about your music is the ability to be sort of classic 
and contemporary at the same time. You know, it sounds like I've heard it before, but it sounds new and fresh at the same time. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Give thanks. No, that's a, that's, that's a serious you know, thing. That's the thing where we try to, you know, because we cannot leave the foundation and you cannot not work with what's happening now. So you have to, we always have, you know, yeah. I have to have two or two sides of the thing. The foundation. Yeah. Listen, we haven't got much time left, so I'm gonna start by just saying thank you thank for you. being here in the British Library yeah. in this event. Thank you on behalf of this entire audience and everyone who's watching on the stream. Because yeah. I know we're approaching a very Busy season for you yeah. in terms of performing, yeah? True. Yeah, yeah, all right. Sorry to remind you that you're very busy, but, <laughs> you know, it starts tomorrow, back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's a real honour to be able to share a stage with you. Thank and thank you for sharing some of your history and your music with us and with the whole world. Um, everyone, I just want to say one last time a big thank you for Julian Marley. Thank you. Thank you so much.